Hello everyone and welcome to this new video brought to you by NBAB Strivers. Dr. Mustafa here and in this video we will resume our series question and answer where we give a question and explain the options and give reference for the answer for it. If you are interested in knowing more about the assessment of fundamental knowledge exam, uh, the NDEB process, the National Dental Examination Board of Canada process, and all the, the other maybe different exams as well. You can sign up to our channel, subscribe, and also our Facebook group is, um, is very active now, and we are trying to post some questions so that people can really benefit, especially people who are all the candidates that are trying to prepare for February exam. So let's jump into our second question. If you didn't watch the first, uh, if you haven't watched the first video in this series, uh, that was a very also good video. And uh, there was a question and answer about lichen planus. So check that out and let's see our next question for today. So our question for today is about the management of traumatic dental injuries which is a very important topic, especially for from the pediatric kind of side in the assessment of fundamental knowledge. And we do actually have about three articles in the from the NDEB list of reference that are very important in relation to this topic. So today, the question that I'm going to just show you after a while is um, the answer for it. And the reference is from those two articles, the, uh, the International Association of Dental Traumatology Guidelines for the Management of Traumatic Dental Injuries, which related to avulsion of permanent teeth. And the other article is the injuries of the primary dentition. So in this question that we will try to answer actually combines a question it's an avulsion question, but it combines the permanent and the primary dentition um, uh, related like to avulsion generally. So let's jump into the question. <clears throat> so the question says, which of the following statements is true regarding avulsed teeth? Option A, the prognosis of the primary avulsed tooth would be best if it's re-implanted immediately at the site of the accident. Option B, stabilization for four weeks using flexible splinting is recommended after re-implanting an avulsed permanent tooth with closed epix. Option C, administration of local anesthesia, preferably without vasoconstrictor, is recommended when re-implanting an avulsed permanent tooth. The last option, option D, the use of systemic antibiotics after avulsion and reimplantation or replantation has not been recommended. So we want one, the question is asking about one true statement regarding avulsed teeth. And as we can see, when we find one of the most important thing to highlight what's happening in the question, because they generalized in the question. It's actually a question that we made. So the question is generalized about avulsion. So it doesn't, from the beginning, determine whether you want to, whether they are asking about primary teeth or permanent teeth. And that's why in the options, there was a confusion here that they are mentioning actually primary teeth and they are actually mentioning also permanent teeth in other questions. So it's very important to pay attention to those small details in the AFK exam. It's really important. They, there is always some tricks about very tiny, small details that people usually miss. So always try to have full focus and attention to the small details in the questions. So we will be looking at each option and we'll try to justify if it's true or false from the article. So jumping into the first option, the prognosis of the primary avulsed tooth 
would be best if it's re-implanted immediately at the site of the accident. So two things here. It's a primary tooth, and they are mentioning we should re-implant it immediately in this, at the site of the accident. So the new guidelines for the treatment guidelines for the primary teeth, and th this article has all the other different types of the trauma for the primary teeth, and all the tables in this article are very important. I will give the link for downloading the article in the in the description below in the video. So check that out. And whoever is preparing for the AFK exam, you should definitely know all the tables in and out. In regards to our question for today and our option, so option A was talking about replanting the primary teeth immediately at the site of the accident. And here, as we can see in the treatment column, they are actually saying that avulsed primary teeth should not be replanted. So because of the fear of damaging the permanent teeth, tooth, they usually now with the avulsion, they usually try to avoid um, replanting the primary tooth. So this is the new guideline. All this table is very important. We are not gonna be digging deep in this video uh, in the table, but what I'm saying is that you have to really know all the other aspects of also this table. Okay, so now we reach to the conclusion that the first option is, is not the right option. So option A is wrong. Moving to option B, they said stabilization for four weeks using flexible splinting. So we have here two elements. We have four weeks, which is the time for the splinting. And then they mentioned also flexible splinting because there is the rigid splint and there is the flexible splint, right? So they said four weeks using flexible splinting is recommended after re implanting an avulsed permanent tooth with closed apex. So for this option, we need to know if it's really four weeks and what are we, what type of splint are we going to be using? So here, they usually now that they said that the current evidence is actually supporting the short term, passive and flexible splints for stabilization of, of replanted tooth, right? So here from this statement, we know that the flexible part is actually correct in our question. However, they said short term. So is the four weeks a good timing or no? Here we find the answer replanted permanent teeth should be stabilized for a period of two weeks. So it's actually half of that period of time. So for our question here, we will realize that four weeks is not actually the best time for splinting the, the avulsed tooth. The flexible splinting is, is definitely right and all the other, the rest of the the information is right, so it's only about this. So this is here, it's strong, it's not four, it's two weeks. Moving on to option C. So administration of local anesthesia, preferably without vasoconstriction, uh, vasoconstrictor is recommended when re-implanting an avulsed permanent teeth. So let's see if they mentioned that. So here are the steps. And actually we have a lot of steps. So depending on which, like the, the, the root formation state and the medium, also the extra oral time uh, for, the, uh, for the tooth to be outside of the mouth. And all those factors, they determine a lot of things in the treatment steps, right? So the, in the article, there are actually different um, treatment steps. They have similarities, but they have also differences for, for, for all the different types of, of the root formation state and whether the tooth was actually kept in a medium or reimplanted at the side of the accident and so on. So all of them actually, they agree on the fact that the local anesthesia that should be administered to try to manage the tooth should be preferably without vasoconstrictor. So there, there is actually like a, a huge debate about whether it's 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 one hundred percent effective in in revascularize in the revascularization of the tooth or not, 
but without like with the with the debate and with the the, uh, the like they, they they haven't maybe reached yet to a consensus about like the actual benefit of it still it's preferable to use the vasoconstrictor uh, it's preferable not to use the vasoconstrictor and to administer the local anesthesia without epinephrine or without any vasoconstrictor so from here we realize that our option c is actually a true option so it's preferable without vasoconstrictor so we have option c is true for now moving to the last option to see what's what's uh, if it's true or no the use of systemic antibiotics after avulsion and replantation has not been recommended. So this statement is actually false based on also the, 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 the article. So they said, even though the value of systemic administration of antibiotics is highly questionable. So there is also, it's not 100% uh, like yet from research, they, they agree that antibiotic is 100% is should be used. But we have here in this line, the use of systemic antibiotics after avulsion and replantation has been recommended to prevent infection-related reactions and to decrease the occurrence of inflammatory root resorption. So another important point also to know like those two reasons. So the use of systemic antibiotics is it is questionable, but it is recommended to prevent two actual things, the infection-related reactions, because the periodontal ligament of an avulsed tooth often becomes contaminated by bacteria from the oral cavity or the storage medium or the environment in which actually the avulsion happened. So it is recommended to use antibiotics. So that's that means our statement here is wrong as well because it says it's not recommended while it's actually recommended to use systemic antibiotics. So that gives us the answer for, that's give the answer for, for our question, which is C. So what I would suggest is that based on this question now, go and read all the, the details in the article. It is a very important article. And many questions can come from that article in the AFK exam. So I hope this helped. And if you are interested in, in following the series, question and answer, we keep giving questions that are very relevant to the AFK exam and trying to explain and also give some references and provide links to download those references. So if you are interested, subscribe for the channel and we'll also leave the link for our Facebook group in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.